Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and today I wanted to highlight a few strategy games from E3 that I'm looking forward to playing in the future. I know I'm quite a bit behind with this, but it's still something I wanted to make. While strategy is their broad genre label, they encompass a range of strategy subgenres, from simulation and tycoon, real-time to turn-based. And I wanted to include a few remasters mentioned during E3, but I'm going to go ahead and work on another strategy remasters video, as there are several of them out there and I'll include them in there, leaving them out of this one. As always, let's dive in. It's been what seems ages since we've last had a proper Stronghold game, since I consider Stronghold Crusader to be the last quality one. But it's now confirmed what Firefly has been up to all these years with Stronghold Warlords. Taking us to the Oriental from the 3rd century BC to the rise of the Shogunate and the Mongol Empire, it looks like Firefly is trying to shake up the standard Stronghold formula, with the ability to hire and use AI warlords to further your empire. The time span we are looking at should give us a great campaign and a wide range of units to choose from, which will be interesting to see play out, especially on the multiplayer scene. There's been several videos made about the release trailer, and from what I've seen in several of the comments, a lot of the community thinks Firefly has taken a step back graphically, how everything looks too neat and clean. I, however, think the art style is highly appropriate and in line with about any strategy game in a Chinese setting. If you think this is colorful, just go play Total War 3 Kingdoms in Romance mode and then come back to this video and see what you think. This is alpha gameplay, of course, and with a 2020 release date, there's plenty of time to de-seek animations and tidy up those loose ends. I'll go more into detail on this game with its own dedicated video in the near future. On the subject of older games making a comeback, Evil Genius 2 has officially been announced by Rebellion Games. I never got around to playing the first Evil Genius game, but this one has definitely caught my attention. In Evil Genius 2, you're hands down the bad guy, building and expanding your own lair, complete with your own personal army of minions and henchmen, and filled with anti-hero traps and snares to keep the good guys from getting to you. There seems to be a huge variety of objectives, all pretty humorous in nature, and I'm really looking forward to seeing just what villainy they're going to cook up and serve to us before the release sometime in 2020. I've already briefly covered this game when it was announced, but we got to see a lot more about Planet Zoo during E3. Frontier Developments has shown a lot of potential in Planet Zoo, and it comes off very much like the game they wanted to make for Jurassic Evolution without the limitations from Universal Studios. There is so much customization and variety in this game to make your zoo 100% your own style, but there's also some more serious undertones of conservation and genetic alteration, where you'll be crafting species down generations to survive better out in their real-world environment. Planet Zoo isn't going to be an action-packed strategy simulation game, but I am very excited to get my hands on it and make one amazing zoo. Planet Zoo is slated for a November 5th release this year, so we'll be able to get our hands on it in about four and a half months. Songs of Conquest is up next, and for those retro gamers out there, this one is hands down for you. From the E3 spotlight, this RTS adventure strategy game got its inspiration from Might and Magic, a series that I've never played. But for me, it looks very similar to the Disciples RTS adventure games I grew up with. The biggest difference in Songs of Conquest is that it appears your leaders will be leading armies Total War style rather than just a handful of units. There's not a lot more to say due to a lack of information, but this blend of strategy genres certainly has my interest, and I'll be sticking close to any news released about the game, and with a late 2020 release date, let's hope we get a lot of it. Empire of Sin is the brainchild of John Romero, famously known for Doom 1 and Quake. His company Romero Games has teamed up with Paradox Interactive to bring us Empire of Sin. Labeled as a strategy RPG, this 1920 Chicago-themed game puts you at the head of a gang looking to create a mafia empire through campaign strategy expansion and XCOM-style turn-based combat. You'll look to build up your crime empire through racketeering, acquiring various buildings, and by creating your own set of goons to settle any misbehaving characters. The game is character-centric, so it won't be so much on the simulation strategy as the RPG, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look good. Empire of Sin will be released spring of 2020, so we've got plenty of time to get some better ideas on how the game will play out. Our last game in this video is one that I honestly had forgot existed, but man am I glad that it came back for E3. Phantom Brigade is yet another turn-based RPG strategy game, which at first looks like a land-based mix of Gundam Wing and Battletech, but with one enormous difference. 
As part of this small operative phantom brigade, you have access to a special AI program that lets you see into the future. Well, kind of. Before each turn, you can see where the enemy is most likely to go and plan your movements, abilities, and attacks around the theorized enemy's moves. The kicker is physics. Every building is destructible, mechs and machines can break or explode, and it's this factor that you cannot see into the future, meaning you might plan ahead to attack a unit, but you don't see that while you're moving, a building might collapse and block your shot or falls on top of you. It's an extremely interesting take on the strategy genre, and with completely customizable text combined with a story-based progression system, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on this one. Phantom Brigade will head into early access in 2020. And that's it for the strategy game shown off at E3 that I've got my eyes on. Again, not including the remasters as I mentioned at the start. It is looking like Q4 of 2019 and early to mid 2020 are already booking up hard for this genre. So let me know which ones you're most looking forward to in the comments section below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, but also a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified when future videos go live. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one.